Hello everybody and welcome to the Ozone. Uh, today we're going to be doing a reaction video to Matt Pat's uh, most recent FNAF theory. Um, this is going to be interesting, this is going to be a very interesting one because it is about, I'm assuming, um, the Evan victim theory, um, which I am totally on board with. Um, I wouldn't say it's 100% confirmed yet, but I, I, I think there's a lot of evidence for it, and I'm, I'm excited to see what Matt Pat actually has to say about it. Um, I wonder if he's going to agree with it, or if he's got some contradicting points. Uh, I want to see where he takes it. So, without further ado, um, we're going straight into game theory. Did Reddit just solve FNAF? Just make sure that if you enjoy this reaction, then you drop a like on this video, and of course you subscribe. That's all I'm asking. One click of the button, and that is it. Um, and yeah, we are going to go straight into this. Uh, I'm, I, I really hope he isn't going to mess this one up. <laughs> um, Matt Pat doesn't usually mess up theories, but um, last FNAF theory was a bit of a... Yeah, and if you want to see uh, my reaction on that, then you can go and check it out uh, as well on my channel. Might be in the description. Maybe I forgot. <laughs> Let's begin. Jay? Jay? Can you hear me, Jay? What did you do today, Jay? I went to the movies. We watched a scary one. It was so scary that I jumped out of my seat. This and is about my Blackbird. Everywhere. Did you do that, Jay? Were you there? Okay. Jake. Jake. I and completely I forgot. Arcade. I ate a bunch of pizza there. I got red tomato sauce all over my mouth and more red on my clothes. There were so many other kids there, and then there weren't. I love you, Jake. You know that, right? I love you. Open the cabinet, Jake. Come over here. Open the cabinet, Jake. Open it. Open it. Open it. Open the cabinet, Jake. A bit off topic. Oh, well, not off topic, but... The Real Hello, Jake Internet. was one Welcome of my favorite to stories. Game theory, Genuinely. Where today, the theory is coming from you. That's right, just because we're all still waiting for Security Breach to release doesn't mean that FNAF theorists out there have been twiddling mm. their thumbs. In fact, the lack of a new game has prompted the community to go back and comb over all the pieces yeah, that were in exactly. place for us before. Pieces that we might have overlooked or missed the first time out. And it was this thorough re-review of the clues that prompted what may be the biggest fan theory to blow up in over a year. And that's saying a lot since 2020 was full of us connecting massive pieces oh, of I this totally franchise's agree. lore. I mean, with the I help totally of Fazbear's agree. Frights, throughout last year's videos, we managed to pinpoint the year of the missing children's incident as Possibly. 1985. We solidly connected Foxy Bro to Michael Afton. We even mm. concluded the high likelihood that two spirits are trapped inside Golden Freddy, not just one. Our vengeful spirit, Cassidy, as well as our Bite of 83 victim, the crying Correct. child. 2020 but was a big have year. Have you ever noticed that that kid doesn't have a name? I mean, it's been six years since he was introduced introduced into the franchise in FNAF 4, and we still don't have any hints as to what crying child's name might actually be when he's, you know, experiencing literally any other emotion. Wait, is that, is that crying child? But no, that's happy child. That's angry <laughs> child, and that's confused child. That's, um, apathetic what? child. That is passionate child. Oh, nope, no, not that one. Ooh, is that emotionally repressed child? Hashtag relatable there. But Isaac. really, take a okay. moment to think about that. Fair we enough. know the puppet's name, Charlie, and her father, Henry. We know that baby was oh. Oh, no, he's gonna go through the entire Afton. FNAF Purple guy now. slash spring trap is William Afton. Other purple guy is Michael Afton. Yeah. We've There's got all the, the names except crying child, victims, really. Jeremy, Fritz, Susie, Gabriel, and Cassidy, the vengeful spirit, who is at least one of the things trapped inside Golden Freddy. I mean, there is a name for pretty much every single character in this yeah. franchise, except for this one kid. The one kid who, wouldn't you know, was also important enough to have the first on-screen death of the series. Feels like we should probably be able to solve this one by now, right? Like, we should probably have gotten yeah. a name for him somewhere along the line, and this or is at the why very I believe least, in the Evan. means by which to solve for his name. Because the I think he put it in the logbook. For us, right? well, today and it must might be it. just be the day where we solve exactly that. One Freddit user named Wolfie1740Kingdom thinks Here we go. he crack the code to finally solve the final name this guy's of a legend. Mystery. To finally give the crying child the bite of 83 victim a proper identity. So break out your tambourines, theorists, because it's Morty time. It's a theory review. Leave your theories in the comments below. I'll pick my favorites in the next episode of Morty. 
Now, today's theory starts <laughs> okay. where all the best theories begin. Dabbing Chica. That's right, folks, we're back to the most important lore item in the whole franchise. Not any of the novels. Certainly not the games. Those are just afterthoughts at this point. The survival no, lookbook, again. It's back to the again. children's activity book, of course. FNAF Survival Logbook. Yeah. In a past FNAF theory, we had a huge revelation about how this thing works. Basically, there are three people present within this book. There's Mike, who's alive and always writes everything in red pen. Yep. There's Cassidy, who haunts the book and Faded speaks text. in ghostly And then Crying Child text, But there's a cool. second spirit here, the Crying Child, who's forced to communicate by actually altering the words that are found in the book. Correct. The example that proves it is right here. Cassidy says, the party was for you, and the Crying Child responds on page 89 by altering the text of the book to read, it was, it was for, for me. me. We know yes. FNAF 4's party wasn't for Mike, and we know Cassidy wouldn't be saying this to themselves. As such, it must be Crying Child acknowledging what Cassidy has said. Same thing here on page 59 with Cassidy asking, what do you see? And Crying Child I answering on page oh, 109, I, I, can't see, I can't see. Again, altering the it's actual the other thing print is, of the things, logbook. So. so that alone <laughs> was pretty huge, and it went a long way to supporting the theory that both Cassidy and Crying Child possess Golden Freddy. Exactly, and exactly. that alone would be pretty awesome. But it still leaves a major part of this book unsolved. You see, on page 95, there's a loose thread that's never been tied up. One that has personally driven me crazy for years. It's a grid where you're told to draw an 8-bit yeah. foxy. Just another random activity in this children's workbook, right? Wrong. The grid is numbered, and you can see in faint print that you're supposed to put letters into the squares, with the first few already being It's there for a so reason, a and we haven't solve solved Golden it yet. Freddy's name years ago, we collected the page numbers where the phrase, my name appeared, we added them together per the instructions hidden in the book, and then we plugged those coordinates into the foxy alphabet grid to get the name Cassidy. Good game, everyone. Let's all treat ourselves to some orange slices and give ourselves a pat on the back for solving another piece of the lore. Except that's not <laughs> okay. how it worked. You that's can imagine weird. my surprise and confusion when the numbers got plugged into not the alphabet grid that was clearly being telegraphed to us, but rather the word, the word search. search. Yeah. And apparently we were right to do that since Scott Cawthon himself confirmed in confirmed his it with the screenplay, yes, the yeah, critical exactly. role that a child named Cassidy plays within the lore. He's on, he's on the right All track so far, he's doing well. Thing. The Map has done his research. The is awkwardly left completely unused, despite it obviously needing to be used to solve one of the mysteries within this book. And that's where Wolfie1740 stepped in. In the book, there's one Cassidy question that's left hanging. On page 31, Cassidy asks, do you remember your name? Uh, of course he does, he's the crying child, duh. Crying child Afton. His, uh, friends call him Bite Victim for short. Just rolls off the tongue. But seeing that the logbook had helped to solve for Cassidy's name, Wolfie suspected that it might also be helpful in solving I, this I, other I think so too. Using, you guessed it, the foxy alphabet grid. What Wolfie noticed was that the crying child specifically uses the knight's four and five shift rating questionnaires to speak with Cassidy. For the first three yes. nights, the section reads as follows. I think the survival logbook was meant health, to stress, give us the purpose, identity hope, of Cassidy, dread. the crying and child, and, and of course Michael Afton, mixed in here. Uh, like, and, and, show, and show those three personalities so and who they really things, are. Taking bite victims' answers and matching them to the page numbers where Cassidy yeah. asks. I mean, I, I've done a whole to video on this too. Uh, Mattpad's obviously explaining it better now. because page it's well, firstly he had more time, which says, "Does he still talk to you?" And one trying to notice is that all four pages have a piece of blood on it. Next is, "It was for me," which is responding to page 103's question of, "The party was for you." Third is I can't see, responding to page 59's what do you see? Right. And last is I'm scared, which stumped me, so I went off of what I already had. End quote. He then fully yeah, filled this out is the, where it goes a bit. the alphabet, yeah. and going in the order that Bite Victim's answers appear, he followed the grid code to find the following four letters. E, V, A, A. N, Evan. After six years, could it possibly be that Evan is the name of the crying child? I honestly, I'm not sure. Or at least I'm not convinced off of this alone. Don't get me wrong, I don't think that's that is a bad completely theory at all. fair. Quite the contrary, in fact. Anything that tries to figure out the true purpose of that stupid foxy grid I'm is actually kind of glad that Matt Pat hasn't just said yes here and gone is with the it. Methodology. Throughout the book, Cassidy asks a lot of questions, but only four of them actually matter. Wolfie also points out the blood stains, but there are blood stains on a lot yes. of the pages throughout yeah. this book, not just those four. And even then, an answer like, I can hear sound 
sounds to the question of does he still talk to you, it feels just a bit off. It's mm -hmm. not very It's a very precise. big stretch. You know, it feels random. Arbitrarily trying to fit pieces together. Is he going to talk about the real... Of course he's going to talk about the real game. But arbitrary. I mean, the Cassidy code alone required you to find six numbers, find a page that points to another page on what to do with those six numbers, and then translate all six of them into the word search. Multi-step right. puzzles like this have to be precise in order to work. And while the puzzle pieces in Wolfie's theory certainly fit, they fit a bit loosely, you know? I mean, even Wolfie admits that finding the last N was a bit of a stretch, and it forced him to break his own methodology. Yeah, in of fact, course it was. another Fredit user, Godzilla813105, tried to correct for that to find the N in a different way. One of the other lingering threads of the book is a series of tally marks yes. written by Mike that never quite add up to anything. They're never used, or at least their true use has never been discovered, but again, similar to the Foxy Grid, they must mean something, right? To quote from Godzilla's post, I realize that there's a magazine Foxy is holding on the first page of Night 1 that has 5-3 on it. When you add 5 and 3, you get 8. Then, I took every single tally mark set in the book and added them together. I got this from the idea of how the whole quiz thing at the end of the shift says tally up your score. Putting all of these together gets you 47. 4-7 Four, on the Foxy Grid gives you the letter N, end quote. Yeah. Again, it sounds good on paper, and I love That's the attempt to make sense of all, but the stretch. why of it just doesn't line up for me. It, why yeah. add tally marks to this number on Foxy's magazine? Yeah. How are those elements it, related? It isn't relevant. Why would they be connected to a completely different set of three numbers gotten from a completely different set of clues? Plus, the story just doesn't hold. Contrary to what Godzilla yeah. says in their post, there is no tally up your score at the end of those nightly surveys. Thus, the rationale just doesn't hold up. In short, it all feels like we're convinced that we have a solution to the problem, and we're trying to back our way into how to get there. Oh, this Matt, is completely classic right. confirmation He's completely bias, right where, here. as you conduct research, you try bias. and find exactly. sources to exactly. justify your belief, or you retrofit the data to fit the conclusion that you're looking for. And I should know about confirmation bias, because lots of our theories over the years mm -hmm. play with that very concept. <laughs> Mario is a villain, provided you ignore all the times that he saves the kingdom. You play as the king in Hollow Knight, as long as you squint really hard during this yeah when, when you when you when you go that. towards me, a theory like you become oblivious to everything else or you, or you just dots throw it away you, you just push it aside you like that you didn't see this you didn't see this plot, but also sometimes go against what is much more likely and probably much more intended by the developer and the theories that i tend to focus on are the ones where you can connect a surprising number of dots even if one or two tend to disprove it they're just meant right, to be fun right. thought experiments you know i like playing with the lore of these worlds but here with fnaf we have to be really careful. While I love both of these posts, yeah. FNAF theories tend to be about trying Especially to with the FNAF things, community. They are things into the generally as accepted canon. <laughs> and as a result, the methods by which we come to conclusions require more scrutiny. And here, the methodology of arriving at the name Evan just doesn't hold up as well as I'd like. But that doesn't mean the name Evan doesn't hold up. Because here's the twist, friends. This isn't just coming from the logbook. Yeah. Shortly here after we go. Christmas, Fazbear the Frights. Fazbear Frights book series released its latest installment, and this is mainly why I believe it the most as well. Story in this franchise. The real Jake, short story number two, tells the tale of nine-year-old Jake who's dying as a result yes. of a tumor in his brain. With this his is why I believe it, because away, we, we see the name the military, and it's Jake almost like Scott is trying to like push it towards us. Like, there's one other here you go, like, like he's like, like, like tempting us, you know? And I really think Scott is trying to tell us that the crying child's name is Evan. Simon had made it clear he would be in the cabinet until Jake got well enough to walk to the cabinet. It's clear at least Evan that, is I'll a parallel to you. Um, and, and Crying well, Child a like little Simon bit. Should be a sinister um, force since, you know, this is a FNAF book Obviously after Jake all, is a parallel to Crying Child too. expression of love. Margie had created this small doll named Simon with a walkie-talkie inside of him that allows Jake's father to speak to his son, distorting yeah. his voice to make him sound younger. Simon, every night, insists that Jake speak about what the real Jake is doing, the one who isn't afflicted with cancer, the one who is outside playing with his friends. All of this was intended to give Jake hope, with Margie updating the doll every few nights with food stains and scrapes on his knees to reflect the adventures that the real Jake has been right, having. Right. It's a beautifully sad story with some legitimate surprises that I'm actually the best not going to spoil here. But the reason I bring it up is that strangely it is the only one of the 18 Fazbear that doesn't have... stories so far that has no explicit connection yeah, to Yeah, exactly. At all. Exactly. Zero. Every other story thus far has mentioned a Fazbear pizzeria or connected back to a familiar animatronic in some I've way. I've been saying this. this. I've been saying doesn't. this. Yes, it does have 
some lore connection to the ongoing Stitch Wraith storyline, but the yes. lack of anything FNAF stands out like a sore thumb when it's just a standard story at this point. The story thus far has connected back in some way, which is why the name of Jake's father stands out so strongly. Jake's father is named Evan, which alone is interesting, but becomes much more noteworthy when you consider that his he brother has a brother is named Michael, Michael his yes. only living family. And not only mm -hmm. that, this is how Michael is described in the book. Quote, he's... He's well, robotic, he's yeah. He, he's intense about making money. He's, and he's uh, Scott really has put that there the on purpose. Can make him seem like he's he not definitely human. has. So he's like a cyborg I'm with so convinced with this theory, work. even mm. though a few brothers, bits don't hold up. named Michael who gets compared to a human robot hybrid? Where have I heard that one before? Father. It's maybe we got the maybe we got the right answer the stuff, with Looking the wrong deeper, formula. This is a story you, you know? about a father communicating with his son via walkie-talkie, just like we see in Sister Location. Heck, you see him communicating through the walkie-talkie that is in a plushie. In the real Jake, it's Simon the Doll with a walkie-talkie. Yeah, there's a lot of connections in, the in games, that story. It's psychic friend Fredbear with a walkie-talkie. Both children suffer from a severe head wound. Jake with his brain tumor and crying yeah. child with there's, a there's three. So in story, many connections. Jake goes on to possess the Simon Doll, only for him to then pass on to the Stitch Raid, sharing that endoskeleton with another soul named Andrew. In the games, could it be that our crying child dies in the hospital and goes on to possess psychic friend Fredbear, which then somehow gets him passed into the Golden Freddy suit, yeah. where he then shares it with another soul I honestly Cassidy. believe that. And all of this is happening in a story that has no connection to FNAF, but very clearly has a connection to FNAF. I'm just saying that the <laughs> absence makes it all the more conspicuous. In short, I'm not convinced that the FNAF survival logbook is solved or anything like that. Right now, I'm just not sure the methodology for arriving at a final name is really as solid as I'd like it to be to enter my personal headcanon. But strangely enough, the name Evan feels like we're on to something. It has some I, very I compelling do, I really to think support it we from the real J story. So at this point, I want to hear from you. Let me know. Are you sold on the crying child being Evan alongside his older brother Mike? Or is this yet another example of Scott trying to bury the lead a bit and confuse us by using the same name a bunch of times? <laughs> Shoving Michael in a bunch of places Probably. where it doesn't belong. Probably. All I know is that I can't wait for the next book coming out in March. At this point, forget security breach. It's all about those sick book drops, my friend. Oh, genuinely, yes, yeah. Um, yeah. At this point, you're I'm right. The lore FNAF I'm more excited about the Pathback Rights than security JRPG. breach right now. But hey, that's just a theory. A game okay. theory. Thanks for watching. Okay, that, that was more of just like a... Uh, this is what the FNAF community has done in the past month or so. Um... And that was a good video. That was actually a really good video. MatPat was on the right track the entire time. Maybe because it was someone else's theory and he's just rounding it all up. Um, but that was really good. That was, he's really told everyone, you can believe Evan because we have found the name Evan. Uh, there is evidence for it, but there are tiny loose ends that we need to tie together. Uh, and it does also uh, have the name Evan in uh, The Real Jake. Um, and so he, he's right in saying, you can believe that if you want, but um, just be hesitant, you know? Um, it is not 100% confirmed. He, he's put that down um, on the table uh, and, and he's really he's really said that really well, actually. Um, and everything that he has provided to us in that video is actually very good. Personally, as I said, I believe Evan Afton. Uh, and as I said before, actually, I think that's a really good thing to take away. I really think that we have got the correct answer, but we have used the wrong formula. And um, hopefully you understand what that me what I mean by that. Um, I, I really do think the intention for the crying child's name was Evan. I really think Scott has uh, been trying to push out Evan. But I, I think somehow we, we've mixed a few things up or... There's another solution to find the name Evan in the logbook, and we haven't done it correctly. But somehow we've still, you, you know what I mean? Like we we we've <laughs> we've somehow messed up, or we we we're missing something um, that is going to solve this mystery for us. But I really do think that the survival logbook is intended to find the name, um, or, or the intention of the survival logbook is to find the name of the crying child. And I think the Foxy Grid is going to do it. Um, so yeah, that's all I really have to say. That was a really good video. Um, hopefully you enjoyed my reaction, even though there wasn't much reacting. It was more just agreeing with Matt Pat. So I'm just going to 
just going to nod in agreement. Um, and yeah, I can't wait for the cliffs to come out uh, either. I, I still need to read Hide and Seek. I'm so glad he didn't spoil it for me in this in this video, but he doesn't really do Fazbear Frights theories anymore. Anyway, uh, I will be reading that soon uh, on my channel, and then we'll be reading the cliffs. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I really do hope you enjoyed, and make sure you press the subscribe button so that you see more content like this, and I will see you all later. Goodbye.